Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are in the galaxy. Welcome. It's Motor Respect from Gaming with myself, Ewan Spence, better known as Manogenix in game, who you'll also recognize from the Elite Scout. This is not an Elite Scout video. This is going to be a little bit more long form, a little bit more rambly, but it is going to be about the big topic of the week, and that is the Thargoid attack on Shinrada Desra. Not only is it made sure that every single YouTuber has checked the pronunciation of Shinrata Desra, and I'm still not sure, but there you go. Um, a lot of people have also asked about how can they get involved because they've not done a lot of AX combat, because they might have been out in the bubble, because they might have just never got that bit of the game, but they want to help out now because of the totemic power of that invasion of Jameson's... Jameson's... His Jameson Memorial, Jameson Respect, Jameson Station. We'll get there in the end. So, you can fight. You can help out. You're not going to be able to solo an entire wing of Thargoids coming in. But you can get involved in a wing of AX pilots and support them. Because anybody can take out scouts. You just need the anti-Xeno multi-cannon and you're great for scouts. Strap on a couple of them onto a ship, do some smart building... And you're there. Why is that important? Because those pilots who are taking on the, the basilisks, the hydras, the medusas, the big guns. Well, you know, a scout doesn't do much damage. Three or four scouts when they jump in, it's not bad. But when those scar scouts start to build up, when you're getting eight, 12, 16 of them in the sky. The amount of damage they can do really does add up. And they become a little bit of a hindrance, a danger, because of course when you hit them, your temperature goes up, you get seen, so there's lots of mechanics that are going on, and keeping the skies clear of scouts is still an important part of AX combat, even when you go up to the higher advanced wings over AX line XSF, there's still how do we deal with the scouts. This is where the classic I'm doing my part comes in, a good ship with multi-cannons, AX multi-cannons, dealing with the scouts, leaving everybody else to get on with everything else in the X combat zone. And when the X combat zone finishes, everybody, including yourself, gets the credit. So there you go. So what we're going to do here in this video is we're going to put together a very, very basic crate mark two for scout fighting. I'm then going to put in just a little bit of engineering into it, uh, just to do one of the critical steps, which is to get your heat below 20%. The basic build is going to sit at about 22%. We want it to run at about 20% because Thargoids have a problem where your temperature goes below 20%, they cannot lead the target. They'll just fire a gun straight at you. So as long as you've got some ventral thrusters on, you're going to be fine to go through there. Now, this is not by my design, by the way. Even though put some multi cannons on, smack it full of hull is pretty obvious. This is something called the Common Core, put together by Commander Mechan and the team at the Xeno Strike Force. So basically, the Common Core is a crate where you can put any weapon on because everything else is properly engineered. Now, we're not going to do the full engineering. We're not going to do the specialist builds that you get from that. You can check the link uh, in the video below, and that will take you to that video, and you'll see how it's all done. What we're going to do is we're going to take that low engineering build that's put together in that video, put it through here, let you see it being built, and then take it into combat, and you can see what's going on. And there might be some traveling by edits. Now, the main thing, of course, here is we can't go to Shinrata Desert to build our ship, even though it has every module, because it's under attack. So we go here instead, Isola Prospect in Bresla, which is another all-you-can-get shop. Although there are a couple of things that you can only get from AXI. We'll deal with those in a second. Thankfully, I'm on auto dock so I can keep talking to you. There is a catch here. Isola Prospect has a 20% premium on everything. Your ships are 20% more expensive. Your modules are 20% more expensive. That also means that your rebuy is 20% more expensive as well. So do not fly without the rebuy. Those of you relatively new, it's the panel over here. It's there. I'm pointing at it on my screen, which doesn't help you, but you line there with 842,000 credits. That's the rebuy cost for my Diamond Black Explorer here. If I bought everything from Isola, that would be 20% higher. So you'd be looking at your 100,000 credits. You will lose ships when you're doing AX combat. So watch your rebuy if you're early in the game or your credit shortened. You're going to learn a lot from AX combat as well, even if just scouts and tanking up on the Thargoids. But watch your rebuy. Okay, into the process. 
um, and we will start out our crate and I'll give you just a little talk through about why we choose each module as well. So, into the shipyard. And let's purchase a ship. As you can see here, we have the full choice. And I'm looking for the crate mark two. And as I say that, it passes underneath me there. So you see there, it's 53 million credits, slightly up on the list price. Yep, we're going to purchase that and we're going to store the current ship. Let's leave it the default colors and the default threads and everything. You can take your time over that one uh, and make your mind up. For some reason, the servers are slow. I wonder why a Sunday evening when there is a massive Thargoid attack going on, I suspect, may have something to do with that as well. It's Oh, so quiet. Do, 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 Okay, and we're in here in our crate. So, let's go over to the outfitting. We'll, we'll, we won't buy any of the hard points here, but first of all, let's just sell the tiny pulse lasers, which we don't need. Or just keep this running at normal speed. Uh, so if you're playing along, pause, get yourself out here, get your ship ready to go here as well. So uh, experimental, as you can see here, they are available here. So we want on our weapons. Will we do our weapons first? Yes, we will, because we've already mentioned what they are, which is the AX multi cannons. Although I'm in a cast three slot. And it's not offering me the three C's. So not everything is here. Checks again for my eyesight. TV, 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 TV. Yeah, we are there further down. I am very old blind person. Okay, three C are the gimbaled ones. And we are going to take gimbal. So you need to have this go roughly in front of you for that one there. They do move around a lot, but we will... Take that there. So we are going to pick up four of these. Three of them are going to be the class three, which is the largest that you can get. We will then buy a class two as well to get as much multi-cannon power as we can get. Now that's the fix. We're not that good. There they are, there. And we will take, as we said there, a class two. And we're looking for the two E. There's my stored modules that are away in a car. We don't need to worry about those just now. Two E, enhanced multi cannon, gimbal. There we go. We're also going to buy beam laser as well. Now, the reason we want the beam laser is we are going to be wanting that so you can cool your ship down. This is one of the points where you, if you can get it engineering, you need the basic amount of long. We usually put a long range on here, but you want the thermal vent. That, when it hits the target, that takes temperature out of your ship, puts it onto the opponent. We're not worried too much about putting it onto the opponent. What we're worried about here is getting the heat down from the ship, getting it under that 20% mark, making it harder the Thargoids to target your ship. So we are going to need to go out and do engineering on that when we get to the engineering point. Basic ship, if you can put in an extra module to put an extra multi cannon here because it's only a class two, not necessarily. So firing groups there, I pressed the wrong key. So let's just head over to the utilities and get some alien finding bits and pieces. So you, you already have heard that I mentioned temperature. So if you thought there is is a heat salt, heat sink launcher a good idea? Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> the other thing that's a good idea is another sink launcher, which is the caustic sink launcher. It's not available here, so we will have to stop by and get that. Bear that in mind. That basically absorbs the caustic acidic clouds that are caused by the explosions of Thargoid missiles and Thargoid ships. 
What is there, though, is the enhanced Xeno scanner. That will help us identify Thargoids, and specifically on scouts, it allows us to identify which of the four types of scouts are out there. There are pilots who are old and bold who don't need the scanner because they can do it by eye. You're not there yet. Also, the fourth one here, which I believe I did see here, is a Thargoid pulse neutralizer. At certain points, the Thargoids can put out a wave that will shut down everything in your ship unless one of these neutralizers has a cloud around your ship. Sort of a, a, like an ECM. You fire it off, you hold it. It's good for, covers you for about five seconds, so you've got to watch for the warning. So apart from the caustic sink, that's your alien fighting jobs done here. Right, speed is vital. So while you could put military alloy in here to increase your hull hit points, we're not going to. We're going to leave that as the lightweight alloy. Power plant, well, we're going to go up to a 7A on that one there. While we won't go near the power delivery point at this point on this ship with multi cannons, we'll only be using about 50% of the power. Later on, you can build the ship up to the full specs on the common core and you will need every single megawatt of power coming out of that. So the 7A power plant is forward thinking. I'm going to sell these e modules as I go along. This is the advantage here, as I said, we're starting on the common core nothing, then common core limited engineering from Commander Mechan and the XFF team. That means that over time you can build the ship that you're building here up as well and get it up to the massive spec that you see flying around the galaxy. 6A thrusters. I think that should be relatively obvious why we want them. We want as much speed and maneuverability. 5A frame shift with super cruise overdrive. Again, longest range, most efficient. SEO lets you, when you are in systems where the aliens are a long long way away that becomes useful so again a little bit of future proofing life support really you only need 4d if you're really weak on oxygen then you can just start synthing you're gonna blow up a lot anyway in terms of power distro 7a as well again we're future proofing uh, on this one so you want to get as much spare capacity as possible we can touch this very lightly with engineering at the start. And sensors. Again, you can take the lightweight on this one. Uh, the long range engineering effect that most people will use on this one doesn't make the difference between 6A and 6D and fuel tank as is. And to the optional internals. We're not, we're gonna again, leave you a little bit of adaption through here. So we are gonna pop in the cargo rack in here full spec there's an argument if you're just finding redemption rider to put this as a hull instead but we're doing a little bit of forward proofing letting you build this once and let you use it in other places to go alongside of that we are going to take a repair limpet that's the 5d repair limpet it's the highest one that we can put on here and we're only ever going to be repairing ourselves so there's no need to get the extra range on a 5a You'll have noticed we've stripped out the shields. Yeah, don't use shields. You use hull tank, you use hull hit points. Remember, it's in Rada, you're right next to a repair bay. You can pop in and get yourself fixed. So what we're going to do now pretty much is a mix of hull reinforcement and module reinforcement. Hull reinforcements are for the outside uh, and giving you more hit points on the ship. We are looking at basically stuffing in some five days here. You're wondering why we don't take the Guardian ones. Once you be engineering on the hull ones, you get a few more hit points. And also, the Guardian ones take more power and can be shut down by the field that's emanated from the Glaives. Thargoid Hunters. Let's put in one of the largest module reinforcements. That's, of course, to prevent internal damage. Um, if you do take it, uh, internal damage, it will come off the module reinforcements before it comes off your actual modules in most cases there are some differences here next one is the class four so we will just go for a hull reinforcement on the class four here move down to our class three spot let's put the uh, module here you'll see how we're going sort of tick and talk and tick and talk and tick and talk 3d on the module reinforcement well we've done hull module hull You know, I think, actually, well, I'm going to switch that one out to hull. 
And when I say I think I've got it, I've looked over at the bit of paper. <laughs> it's just preparing that one. We want a little bit more hull here than we do with... No, not that one. 3D. Thank you very much. Because in here, we're going to put class 3 field maintenance unit for repairing. Now, again, most of the time around Shinrata, you're not going to need this because you can nip next door. But we're going to put, as I said, remember, common core, future proofing. You can build this up over time. A class 1 and a class 2 slots that are left are going to be the module reinforcements. So, module 2... And module one, you'll spotted there that we're taking away the super crews. We also aren't doing a docking computer on here as well. If you really, really, really think you can't manage it, then yes, you just give it a go. Give it a go. You're gonna be fine, okay? And uh, plantry suite can't move. So uh, if you just have a look along at the specs at the bottom, we're about nineteen. 20 light year jump range, speeds 278, boosting to 383. That's relatively slow. We need that bit higher. Um, power, as you can see, we're only using about uh, just a touch over half power. And uh, power distributor draw, damage that we can give. It's pretty high there, 67 a second. But here's the inter interesting one for you your integrity, 1376 hit points on your hull. What you do want to see that is how much damage you can take and it is a fair amount of damage folks don't go worrying that you're going to be there but we can get that a little bit higher that said if you are flying a non-engineering just the modules off the shelf build this is it but we can go a little bit better we can do a little bit of line engineering on here and we can help it through and to do that we need three of the very early engineers. One of them is the one that everybody out there is familiar with, and that, of course, is Felicity Farseer. She can help us engineer the power plant, our thrusters, and the FSD. We have the Dweller, who can deal with the power distributor and that beam laser. And we have Liz Ryder, who can do her armor and her hull. Let's pay a visit to those engineers now. And here we are in the delights of Desiat. I know we have the FSD, but it's far, far quicker to travel by JCM. Jump cut magic. Okay, Felicity Farseer is he's our base engineer. I'm sure every one of you will come over her at some point in time in your travels to make your ships slightly better. And some key key engineering steps here once I can actually work out where Fliss wants me to land looks to be about there lovely okay right then let's just bring ourselves in here I mean the thing about these videos that I was when worrying is you all get to see how bad I am at flying <laughs> okay let's just do a left hand traffic pattern 50% throttle and a 200 MS. Gear down. There we are. Set up nicely on the approach. And a maneuvering speed. Coming in on bay four. Now, what we're looking here is we're engineering the power plant, the thrusters, and the FSD. Now, the FSD is purely for ease of travel. and get a longer range out of it, which just makes getting around the bubble, getting into position, that little bit easier. Yes, we'll repair it straight away. Let's go through those engineering changes. As I said, we're long ranging the FSD because we can't use jump cut magic in the actual game, unfortunately. And I'm only going to go up to the level that the engineer is unlocked here. Okay. You can do up to grade five 
on FSD from Farseer. So in in a great fit of planning, I didn't check my materials going through, but thankfully the material changes that were put through in the last few weeks, which have sped up gameplay. Seen that two weeks ago on the scout report means that uh, just crunching through this isn't going to be too much of a trouble. And two. And three. And four. And we will all the way up there as well. And for those of you who wanted, who aren't able to use JTM and have to use the FSD as normal, it's seven jumps with our base crate that we built there uh, back at Isola to get here. And you can do it without any fuel scooping on that one. So you can just get all the way through. We do take an experimental effect as well, which in the case of this ship is going to be the mass manager. And that takes us from about between 19 and 20 light years in terms of jump range. Now hands us... 33 to 35 so 33 to 31 but if we were to carry a bundle of limpets so our next step is going to be on our engines we would just like to get as much as we possibly can here we can go up three steps so we're going to take dirty drives here to get as much maneuverability and speed as possible now when you get further up the engineering chain the obvious thing to do is grade five dirty drives and also put drag drives on them as well. Get as much speed as possible, but we're not going to do that now. Along with the power plant, what we're going to do here is work on the thermals of the ship. If you can get your ship below 20% thermal, then the Thargoids will find it much harder to see your ship. Now, practically, what that means is they might still see you, but they can't lead their shots. So if you're at 21%, they can sort of aim just in front of you, bang, and drop on you. They can't do that when you're below 20%. They can only fire directly towards you. So if you have enough speed, be that main engines, turning, or most likely lateral thrusting, they're going to miss you. You just keep that lateral thrust moving, and as long as you're below that 20% heat, you're going to be fine. And to do that, you need to run the power plant colder. We'll get to that in a second. But you also need to balance out things that make a lot of energy. So, for example, when you go into combat, you're going to switch your FSD off on this this build. You're going to make sure that your cargo hatch is closed off. You're going to make sure that your AFMU is not running. And you're going to add two experimental effects. The first one is thermal spread. That cools down the thrusters. When you come to build this up to a bigger common core with all your grade 5 engineering, switches back to dirty drag. But for now, thermal spread your thrusters. Like that. The power plant? Well, we actually have a power plant setting um, that is exactly what we need. It's called low emissions. The older uh, software calls this clean drives. We've only got one step here, but what's more important is it allows us to put an experimental effect on. So we are going to take the low emissions. You see there drops the heat efficiency 0.4 down to 0.3 in the multiplier. And this allows us to put an experimental effect on. And just like we saw in drives, there's this thermal spread which brings another temperature down. We go from 0.4 originally down to 0.27 on the heat efficiency. That will, along with everything else and switching your systems off, Bring us down to 20%. Do you get any colder? For that, you need a beam laser equipped with the thermal vent special effect. That takes heat away from your ship, puts it on your target. You land that beam on a thyroid, you can drop your temperature from 20 to 0 in a matter of seconds. So, guess where we're going now? Actually, there's one more change we can do. We can actually long range those sensors. Let's do that step as well. One, two, three on the long range. Plenty of the materials. Now, if you can't get these ones all the way up, go out and get the materials. It will make your life a lot easier. You can probably get away with not doing the long range to start with. 
but Thargoids, even in this stage where it's the scouts, it's relatively inaccessible uh, on the attack on Shinrara. We aren't... I don't think this is going to be the only fight that happens in the bubble over the next couple of months. So you're going to take your low engineering ship. You're going to build this up over time if you get involved in the combat. Uh, and, you know, if you don't want to go full on, you just want to keep a little scout killer at hand to help out in these AX wings that you're finding in Discord and everything. Great. Keep this one in your hangar. that will be fabulous. There we are. Long range on the sensors. Power plant. Clean and cold. FSD. As much range as we can get. Engines. Cold. Faster. What's up next? We're going to go and get that beam laser. We're going to be able to help cool our ship down with the thermal vent. And yes... I'm going to travel once more by the magic of jump cuts. And as the great Mark II drops out of jump cut magic travel, we find ourselves at the Black Hole Base. Now, for those of you um, who are traveling the old-fashioned way it's five jumps uh, from felicity farseer out here to see the dweller of course one of the reasons for having that longer range on the fsd is it makes it even though a longer distance from our first jumps it's fewer actual jumps okay oh well, we've got an 07 landing pad finally great we can use that for the thumbnail okay speed comes back I'm mentally under the 200 meters per second, so I'm comfortable bringing the gear out. 15 degrees, intercept the glide slope. Coming in quite shallow for a lead, but uh, in 11 degree, that's uh, quite steep for an aircraft. Okay, final check. Engines out, gears down. 07 commanders. Woohoo! Oh, nearly made, nearly dropped on spot there. Right, okay, so we're here at the dweller. And we're here for two uh, things. And again, we're just going to use what the basic engineering number. So it may be that, uh, you know, I've got more of these pinned personally. And we can go much higher. But we're doing the low engineering with three entry-level engineers, as you remember. Um, so first of all, let's do the power distributor. Like, it's a power distributor. You want as much charge in there uh, for uh, so you can recharge as fast as possible both your system capacitor because the more energy you have in there, the longer that the Thargoid Pulse Neutralizer Field will survive. You want your weapons to charge up again quickly. Yes, multi-cannons don't take much, but you are going to have a beam laser in here as well. And we're going to be engineering the beam laser as well. Let's do the power distributor first. Okay, now, as you can see here, just to go back, Dweller gives us all five on the power distributor. So we're just going to go all in on the charge enhanced. Charge enhanced basically reduces the capacity slightly, but increases the speed of energy flowing in. So you get a faster recharge time. That's what you want. And that's what the best thing there is, because you're going to be going up and down. You're going to be draining. You're going to be putting more things in and out and in and out. And again, in terms of forward looking, once you pick up more of the heavier hitting guardian weapons, the plasma, the shards, the gauss, or if you go even further and take more shards, gauss, and plasma, or you even go for the enhanced, enhanced AX multi cannons, you're going to need, as well as more power, they're going to drain down your weapons capacitor much, much faster. So we want to be able to recharge them much, much faster as well. All about this common core, starting low. If you stay at that, you stay at that. If you want to carry on your journey into AX, we're going to put you in the best shape possible with these changes. We also are going to have an experimental effect here. We do have a couple... You'd think we have a couple of choices, but pretty much the, there's one. And that is going to be the super capacitor experimental effect, which we can now add in now. 
superconduits, not cluster capacitors. <laughs> Super capacitors. Can we have both of those? Can we, would we be allowed to do that? No. Again, we're reducing the capacity very slightly. We are reducing the recharge time as well, so it's much faster uh, to get them all topped up. And now we come to the other key modification that we use for our thermal envelope. Remember that we took down uh, the power plant with the clean. We added in a thermal spread to our thrusters, although if we are going to expand this, we switch that to dirty drive and we bring the power plant down even more uh, to help that. Those two get us to 20%, that vital 20% number. But we can go further. And for that, that's why we have the beam laser sitting in here. So first of all, we go long range. We're starting out at 3,600 meters. Now, with the best thing in the world, if you can get up to grade five, you, you're going to go out to six kilometers, which is a great distance to do that. But we're not going that far now. We're just going to go with what you have with your entry level engineers. It takes us out, as you see there, to 4,800 meters, a bit shy of five kilometers. But you're going to be inside that quite comfortably when you're taking, when you're giving fire and when you're taking fire as well. But the key thing here is this experimental effect, thermal vent. It doesn't change the numbers, but what it does is it takes heat out of your ship, puts it onto the target. That gets your ship cool. That gets you down from 20, it can take you all the way down to zero, it can take all the heat out of your ship, turn you into this black hole of nothingness. And of course, it takes time to heat back up again to 20%. So you've got time to move around, to stay on the lateral thrusters, so you can't be led. So you can avoid the incoming fire. That's what we needed here. That's one of the key things that you'll have, along with your offensive weaponry, your beam laser. Yeah, okay. It helps to strip down the shields when you're taking up a thermal interceptor. But the main thing is, it's defensive. It keeps you cool. We have one engineer left to visit, which is Liz Ryder. And uh, what Liz has to offer is pretty simple. And the engineering option she has is increasing your hull, hull reinforcement, increasing your armor. We are a tank, a hull tank. No shields. All our defense is on hit points. And that means more hull, more reinforcement, armor, it's all useful. So here's a number to keep in mind. Right now, 1,376 armored health, which is a hefty number. But we can get that higher. We can lift that higher. And that is going to help us a lot more. We can get another 500 under that armor health. So let's activate the jump cut magic drive and go and see Liz. And we drop in once more with the jump cut magic drive. Those of you taking the slow way, we've paused the video and are following along. Thank you very much. Link, like, love, follow, subscribe, all the usual stuff that you get on social media. Only four jumps to take you out here from the dweller. So it was seven from where we started out to Farseer. Turning it at Isola, five to the Dweller, four to Liz. That surface is getting rather close rather quickly. Okay, can I see what pad you're putting me on from up high? It's getting harder and harder to see with those old eyes. Okay, there we are. Let's just... Uh... Great big hill in the way. We're going to have to do a diving approach on this one. I know technically I could just fly over it and land in, but old habits die hard, shall we say? Also, I'm well over the 200 knots approach speed, so. Time to approach speed. Under 200 meters a second is not knots. Okay, 15 degrees bearing to intercept the ILS. And 
and we'll just curve. Oh, we're back in the pad four. Fair enough then. Moving speed gear down. Final check's done. And I know that some of you might be looking at this thinking, yeah, I do lose the advanced and auto dock. Well, you're not quite sure about those great grunge and speed ins and drop fast. Take yourself in an old aircraft circuit, just like that. Anyway, we're here at Demolition Unlimited. See our final engineer in our low engineered version of the crate, the Common Core from Commander Beckett and the XSF. And Liz Riley here is it's pretty much what we're going to do. Offers hull reinforcements, armor reinforcements. Only offers grade one, but that's enough to add in a fair amount of hit points. Also available torpedoes, mines, missiles, things that we're not using here. So, you might remember back early that we you, you do have the choice if you wanted to go in terms of armor for military, which does give you more hit points. It's also heavier. And speed is very, very important uh, in AX combat, especially when you're you're still at quite a low speed because in terms of your, your thrusters, you are only going to get... I think grade 3? We've only got grade 3 dirty, which gives you top speed when you've got 4 pips going into engines of 350. You can boost up to 482. Boosting, by the way, it sounds like your temperature, so try not to do it too often. Or under heat sink if you have to. So, lightweight is especially recommended here, because you want to keep that. Let me just do a little bit of a check here in the spreadsheet. If I just heavy duty deep plane a military grade, what does that do to a 350, 482 speed? Speed. I'm just going to hit the drop down there. Heavy duty one deep planing. Not expect seven meters per second off. Takes you to 343 and 472. It also, of course, increases your turn rate a little bit as well. Uh, and yep, that does give you um, a fair, fair amount more of hit points. So if you're especially worried about those hit points, you do have the option of adding in military. And I suppose at this level, that might be quite important. But if you are going to go further into AX, if you're going to use this common core as the base, then lightweight. Keep the speed, keep the maneuverability. Because once you go up to G5 uh, on the military, you lose a lot of speed. Uh, and you lose a bit of jump range as well. It's, it's not false economy yet, but it will be. Anyway, lightweight alloys, heavy duty armor, grade one, guaranteed one spin. Thank you very much for that. Experimental fight, deep plating, boosts the hull. Slightly drops down on everything else, but that's fine. We're not doing anything else. That's okay. Armor, we've done. Hull reinforcements, we have three, a five, a four, and a three. Now we're going to keep this simple here. We are going to do heavy duty hull reinforcement on all three. That includes the deep plating special effect. There is a potential little wrinkle that you might want to put blast resist on number three. Now that still gives, well, I'll show you the numbers in a second. So we're going for deep plating on this one. Nope, I don't want to. Have I just accidentally removed that? 5D hull heavy duty. No, I'm, I'm completely lost now. 4D. Heavy duty. No, I have. Maybe I have. There we go. Let's just spin that round. And the experiment effect of deep plating. There we go. Right, okay. Focus, focus, focus. On reinforcement. Now, now that heavy duty, okay? Put up your mass. Sorry, I got that the wrong way around. Head went now. Went off script. There we are. So, they are a bit heavier, but they increase everything all around. Hull goes up 24%. That's one remember. Blast resistant hull. Okay, you still get a hull with reinforcement. Not a lot, though. Just 3%. Compared to up 24%. But you do get 11% more explosive resistance. Thermal resistance, kinetic resistance, they drop. There is a thought 
that the caustic missiles are doing a little bit more blast damage. But we're not sure. So, anecdotally, we're still playing around with that. But for now, we're going to keep it simple. We're going to keep it by the book, as they say. And we're going to do heavy duty hull and a deep plate. Over all three. And I just points out one of the delights of Elite Dangerous as a whole is like with modules, with engineering, there are so many options. There's no one right way to do it. There are ways that are more advantageous than others. There's by the book ways that follow everything normal, but don't be afraid just to stray. Think about what you're doing. I'm quite happily putting in a 1D hull reinforcement in some of my ships just to up the explosive production. But what we're doing here is the common core that through lots of testing, through many commanders in the X community, that's it. This is, you can hang things off this. You can tweak this design. And that's what that would be. It would be a tweak on the design. So we're almost there. Our hull's done. Our armor's done. We have engineered our drives, our FSD, and our power plant. We've sorted out the power distributor. We've got our thermal vent on the beam. You remember there's one thing left to do and that's get the caustic sink launcher that's available from any of the rescue ships that are dotted around in terms of thoroughguide combat but there's one specific rescue ship we are going to go to and now it is just 11 light years away from shinrata desra it's in v886 centauri it's the rescue mega ship here of the Cornwallis. And what's important about that, one, you can buy lots of AX modules from it, very, very useful, including the caustic sink, which is very, 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 very useful. But it's also where you sign up for the CG on Shinrara Desra. And if you've not signed up for the CG, you want to do that at the Cornwallis ship before you go into combat. So we're going to do that as our final check. We're going to get our caustic sink and have our ship completely kitted out we're going to make sure we're signed up to the CG and we're going to have a little bit of fun with the scouts if you were doing this you're looking at three jumps I wish I'd scripted this because it's went seven then five then four then three it's made the jumps even smaller but I don't have that I have the jump cut engine I'll see you at the rescue ship and as the jump cut magic drive cuts in for a second last time, I think, we're on the approach to the rescue ship Corn Wallace. Pick up the caustic sinks. Make sure we're signed up to the community goal. And just do one or two final bits of setup on the crate too before we head into the danger zone. I don't actually think that I am going to need Night vision on this one. There we go. Let's just look at the ship there. Now we're in a relatively public lobby here, actually. I do wonder if I'm going to have enough space to get on. And yes, we have right then. Slightly different approach here. It's a relatively straight in approach, but we're going to be ducking underneath. This is where handy things like being able to look around. And we can just... look to see what landing pad they've put me on and it comes through there right the ship gear down I will just lateral slide and bring us on the landing pad six there we go gears down good landing touchdown so we have one bit of outfitting to pick up here. You remember that it is the caustic sink launcher. It means if we fly through the caustic clouds that's left behind when a scout or interceptor or a hunter thargoid explodes and he's left behind, normally it would burn through your hull. The caustic sink acts as a wick, it takes it in. If it's on your hull, Caustic Sink will draw it back as well. 
So let's just go into our utility mounts. It's our final utility mount. It's not under heat sick launchers, it's under experimental. So there we go there, one final track just to show you through. We have our gimbaled multi cannons, we have our beam laser with the thermal vent effect. We have our four utility mounts. We have our various A's and D's, basic engineering on the, the core internals, optional internals. Now, we're going to a station that is under attack, and they don't sell limpets. So you got to buy your limpets beforehand here for the repair control. Now, we're not really going to use those limpets in combat, so but just out of habit, I am going to pick some up because you never know. <laughs> So, you know, they do add to the weight of the ship. We're not going to take too many. We're just going to think eight's going to be enough just to have a sort of comfort. Because if we get very badly damaged, we can nip into the station and get repaired. But if we're very badly, like we're down a one or two percent hull, we might just want to top ourselves up before we do get in. And we'll do that as well. Now, you might have heard Discord call there. That's going to be Commander Ema 622, who's going to be joining us to give us a little demonstration uh, on what is going to be going on when you go into a small wing. Uh, we're just deciding what the PG group is going to be. And uh, bah, bah, bah. I'll come to that in a second. Matt's going to have to hold on for us because I do want to finish off one or two things. Da -da -da -da. suggest a wing there right so we have our limpets on board we have our engineering we have our modules what we do want to do is sign up to the community goal so we do that by going to the mission board community goals there you go now i'm already signed up so the option is not here on the screen if you were to do it and come up here you'd see a sign up for a community goal so whenever you destroy any thargoids around shinrata you'll get combat bonds bring them here cast them in They'll count towards the global progress. Eight trillion is the target. 3.9 trillion as we record this. And we are just a little shy of halfway through the week. So we're on course, but we are going to need a big push over the next couple of days. That's how you can help with this build. So the final thing to check here is just the fire groups and how to set everything up. So we're going to put the beam laser on our secondary fire. We're going to put our molly cannons on our primary fire. On our second one here, we're going to put a repair limpet out on... Well, you can put it on one or two, and I prefer putting it on one because that means I can put my caustic sink launcher on two. The other thing to note here is the, the Thargoid Pulse Neutralizer. I have that bound to the comma key on my keyboard, so I don't need to have it up here. But if you want to have that under a trigger, you can do that yourself. So we have our two firing groups set up, one for offense, one for defense. So that's us. We're now going to launch. We're going to leave the Cornwallis. We're going to head over to Shinrada Desra. Um, and when we get there, we're going to go to Jameson Station and dock. So if we do get destroyed, we will come back to life on Jameson. It's not a station. It's a memorial. I will remember that at some point. <laughs> so, Dockhead Engine, I'm going to meet you there. We're also going to meet Commander Matt. We're going to fly out in a wing of two. I'm going to show you how useful it is, basic ship and moldy cannons, to help out as the Thargoids invade Shinrata Desra. And as our final travel by jump cut magic, uh, it's just one jump over uh, from Cornwallis into the Shinrata Desra system for those of you who are keeping track. Okay, so what's it like in combat? Well, as I said at the top, this is all about support. You would have to be a madman or Commander Mechan to take this into combat solo. So uh, I have brought in another AXI commander to help me out here. Emat's joining me now just now. So hopefully I go radio call. Emat, can you hear me? Read you five by five. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much for this. Right. So let's wing up now. We're both in Jameson Memorial, uh, which is the main station uh, inside of Shinrara Desra. And now we can see Emat there, and we can invite him into our team. And we'll get Emat to check his blues. And there we go there. So we're just going to do this in a wing of two. It's relatively simple. Um, I'm, I, we're outfitted, as you know, with all the multi cannons. Our job is going to be to keep the sky clear of scouts. And Emat, what's your job? 
Take out some interceptors. Take out some interceptors. Simple as that. Right. I'll see you outside. Let's get us out into space and catch you outside. It's a very good chance that we'll see Matt uh, taking off out here as well. We're looking for a challenger. Actually, Matt, do you want to take off in front of us and we'll see if we can get a visual on you? Yep, copy. I'm at your 3 o'clock. There we are there. Right, take yourself out of the mail slot and we'll see you there in a second. Have those of you, you all know how to do wing combat, but blue on the wing in the scanner is helping you out there. So there's our teammate there. Matt, uh, what weapon are you flying, Matt? Got a, um, a shard challenger. So nice, good range journey. I've got four mod shards and three um, long range thermal vent beams. Okay, and. Until the flower turns up, we can take out our scouts. We've got some in front of us already, as you can see there. And we have a caustic missile coming in there as well. So you'll be able to see that pop up. Caustic sink launcher bar. And there's our first scout down. You'll see there that we've got a fair amount of scouts. We've got five, maybe about eight scouts in this instance running through just now. So Matt, I'm assuming you're giving us a little bit of a help with some of these. Uh, nope, I'm just... Evading some uh, some missiles right now. So any damage you're doing, you're uh, you're doing pretty much all of it. But let's see what damage I can actually do without the bulkies. Yeah, we've taken some damage getting out the mail slot. I uh, brought us down to fifty percent hull. I've got repair limits if you need them. And remember that we've actually taken up taken on board a five D repair limpet because we'll be building up and using the ship later. And we put on a token eight. There's a, just above us on our view, you've just seen Thargoid Interceptor. It's a Cyclops. There we go, it's just passing air, three o'clock now. All right, heading in. And you'll have seen the damage that we've taken just from the scouts as we came out the mailing sl mail slot. That's what we're preventing happening to Matt. So as Matt sits there, takes out. Now you'll see his red thermal vent beam there, keeping himself cold while he's underneath. And taking out the Thargoid Interceptor. We can take out this guy here, it's another Marauder. Now there are various classes of scout. Hopefully we can see some of them up here. Yeah, we've got Marauder and Insider. The two that we don't have there are Berserker and a regenerator. If you see regenerators, take them down first because they heal everybody else. I'm done. How are you doing out there? Um, uh, ran into the swarm. <laughs> I'll be relaunching in a second. Yeah, so there we are. Matt, we're keeping the skies clear of scouts, but you've let yourself be taken up by something called the swarm. Well done. <laughs> Principle still stands. So that is one reason why when we came in here, we didn't go straight into combat. We went straight to Jameson Station as well, just to make sure that if we blew up, we would be able to do that as well. So you'll see there that uh, we've probably half the scout count, but we've got 30% hull as well. So I think we're now going to do a combat landing, get ourselves into the station, and do a quick repair. We're not quite in range yet. We're in range now. Caustic missiles coming in us. We're 27% hull, but we've got lots of space in the caustic launcher, so I'm just gonna let that pop in. If it does hit and take the damage hit. We'll see Matt flying out. Matt, see if you can count the Cyclops away a little bit, yeah? Copy. Now, kiting means uh, basically having the Thargoid wanting to attack you, flying out to you, and of course then you fly away from everybody else. It's almost like a way of getting the Cyclops out on its own. And that works with all the Interceptors, so when you're doing the big, hefty Medusas and Hydras, you can get them away from the main action. 
that means that the scouts will take longer to get out there, the swarms will be less isolated. So basically, you can focus just a little bit more on taking them out. You can also focus on useful things like remembering to put down your landing gear. There you go, Matt, one mistake each. <laughs> Oh, we do have a basilisk out here too. So a basilisk uh, has one extra, one more heart than a cyclops. That's five. It's also the fastest moving interceptor as well. You remember when we built up, we deliberately made sure we dirty dragged up our drives so we would have more speed. We'll pop ourselves out again. We thinned out the scouts before we got here. We'll thin them out again. And we'll let Matt get stuck into the exerting the hearts and taking the hearts down. If I was being smart, I would have said I'm playing badly, almost like it's my first time because it will be your first time, but I don't think I'm that good. I Alright, you got Cyclops got coming right at you. Okay, then I'm gonna take the chance to boost as well. We'll just pop a heat sink shortly. Zero. Put on a little bit of lateral thrust as well. And we are out of the mail slot with no damage. So as you said there, you might remember that we talked about having a beam laser for a thermal vent. Let's just take this moment now. Down. We just fire our beam laser now. You'll see that our temperature drops from 9, 6, to 4, to 2, 0. And that keeps us utterly cold. One of the things you'll now see here is we've deliberately moved in to take a lightning strike. If you're getting too close to the interceptors, then they can still visually see you with the lightning strike. And that's why we have a high grade of modules. If we go over here and look at the repair, you'll see that the damage there has went to the module. 15 off the hull. And just one off the internals. just have a look and see what we've got. We've got one scout at the moment. It's Marauder. That's the basic level scout. You can see there that it is relatively close to map. Those yellow things there outside are the swarm. They're very small ships launched by an interceptor. So we just, again, we are cooling down from when we open fire. Uh, why am I? I know why I'm too hot. I'm going to say it's a spot quiz. Can you remember? Yep, you've got to put your frameshift drive off when you're coming into combat. You've got to put your cargo hatch off and you've got to put your AFMU off. Just put a boost there. Got a missile coming in. Yeah, got a visual on it. And we're good there. We just drop our beam laser. On here, you'll see our heat dropping now. Takes to zero. And we're just going to run straight and level. you see that it takes a long time for our temperature to come up. Scout-wise, there's that regenerator I was telling you about. We don't like regenerators. Then any damage taken on those is passed over by anybody else. And that's been taken out by an NPC. But you now see we're at full throttle. Temperature's come up and it's now stable at 20%. We'll just check in with our wingman. Matt, how you doing? Got one heart left on this clubs. Okay, so one final thing we're going to show you now is tagging up. We're going to show you the energy surge. One, two, I hold down the comma key, which means my ship is not shot down when that field passes over me. And now we take everything back out of the system capacitor into engineering. I have another Cyclops on me with a lightning storm. As we see there. We're just going to lock onto the Cyclops with our thermal beam. 
we've got to use that to keep ourselves cool. But we're also doing just a little bit of damage to the Cyclops as well. Matt, we're good to good to go when you need to take it down. Cops down. Dropping our final shots there. We have tanked up the beam laser as well. And just like that, we have 8 million credits. We also have the other clops taking on the lightning as well. And one, two, three, four, five scouts to deal with as well. Now, when you bring up a wing of four people, and you've got three taking on your interceptors, then it's much easier to keep the skies clear of the interceptors because they're going to be focusing on the other ships. That leaves you time to clear the scouts. So, Matt, uh, we've had one destruction eight. What's the difference does it make to you taking on the interceptors, having somebody watching over the scouts? Um, it takes a whole lot of, like, really just, a, like, I can keep concentration on the interceptor instead of having to worry about where all the scouts are located. It keeps me from taking a bunch of extra damage from different missiles. Um, really, it just, it takes a lot off my plate and allows me to really focus on the, uh, on the interceptor. And of course, when you're out there flying your crate, for those of you watching the video, you're not going to be yabbering into a microphone trying to explain everything that's going on. These sort of things that you can just keep in your head, keep a watch, and just enjoy the game. So when they turn around and everyone's going, you know, what can I do? I'm, I'm early in my piloting game. I've not done much AX. What you need is craft with AX muddy cannons. With a bit of engineering, as we've seen here. And go out. Have some fun. Defend a human race. <laughs> find a group of people who want to do finding, and you could find them on the likes of Reddit. You can find them in the various discords. Go out there. Do what you can. Keep the skies clear of scouts. And happy teammates take down the interceptors. And if we all keep on doing that more and more and more and more, more credit bonds, more credit bonds, more credit bonds, closer to the 8 trillion, and then whatever elite's going to do next, the Thargoids in the center of the bubble, that's what we're going to find out. In the meantime, you can see all the scouts are over at the equivalent of my 9 o'clock, but in front of me, I have my teammate, Taking on this here. So given the distance that the scouts are away, I think I can pop in and do a little bit of a hand here as well. No jump cut magic here. Just combat. Thanks very much. This is you and Spence. Come out of Genix. I think like, love, share, subscribe, all the usual social media stuff you're aware of. Matt, anything you want to share? No, I think I'm good. Then I will press the fade out button. Thanks very much for your time. Hopefully it's given you a guide to what you can do to help stop your teammates getting destroyed. Matt, that wasn't a very good example at the end. <laughs> uh, but the laughter is part of the game as well. Thanks very much for listening uh, and watching and doing all the stuff on YouTube. Uh, Elite Scout episodes will be back every Friday. More commentary and discussions about what's happening in the game and in the meta. But for now... I think Mekin says glory to mankind. And given that it's his build, check the link below for all the variants that you can have in the common core. Uh, but for now, I will say ta for now, and we'll see you somewhere around the galaxy. <laughs>